see why it's not working, but... Alright, maybe the episode 2 doesn't have one. I seriously don't think episode 2 has one. Yeah, you do now. Fine, got you. No, episode 5 has one. Come on. Come on. So, Bentley, what's the job? Well, Clockwork's parts have been stolen, and we are the prime suspects on Inspector Fox's list. Ah, she's really quite lovely when she's angry. Sly, we've got to clear our day. Oh, sorry. And the Marinator's got you covered. This is our biggest job yet, so we really have to work together, but the whole job is blown if we don't have someone at the controls. So, are you in? Later D for everyone. PS2. Why were PS2 commercials like the best back way back when? PS2 commercials were like bomb. I'm not saying that like, PS3 commercials are like, as cool, but I'm just saying like, they were the shit back then. You don't know. Sly Cooper is cunning, cool, he's, I'm not supposed to look in the camera at you. <laughs> Tell me about Sly Cooper. Well, Sly Cooper is a thief, and he's a different type of thief. He's cool, he's tough, but he's got to be lovable at the same time. And he's also a really good looking guy, and he has a sexy voice. Just, Sly and his crew are back. I'd say about a month into development, we came up with a one-sentence description that really has guided the development of the product. And the one sentence was, Sly and the gang work together to pull off a string of big heists. When I say heist, I mean like classic Hollywood heist film kind of heist, where the last third of the film is all about this big, spectacular, elaborate crime involving many thieves working together to do something huge. We knew we wanted to do something a little different than the first slide. We wanted to um, broaden some of the gameplay elements, broaden the environments, have more characters in the game. You actually use all the different character skills in different ways and different combos, and it, it really makes for a really fun experience. There's a backstabbing, there's a betrayal, there's a jailbreak. Thiefiness is different things to different people. For some people it's um, being sneaky, for some people it's being agile. We want Sly the Thief to really encompass all of these things. It is really fun and really thiefy to be on the top of the roof, scaling across the level, running across wires, looking down at guards looking for you. I think we all would love to be able to do the things Sly does, just to be able to jump from rooftop to rooftop, land like a cat on top of a wire and scamper down it. If I did that, I'd break an ankle. <laughs> Two things that we 
try to keep in mind when we start the drawing of Sly is number one would be definitely the silhouette, creating a strong silhouette, which is especially important in animation. Um, and number two is motion. He's always kind of forward moving low to the ground um, and try to get a lot of motion and usually just start off with a couple of lines and let that be sort of his overall arcing motion. Um, it'll be like his spine and his supporting leg and off of that just sort of compose where his details are going to be. I haven't stolen anything yet. Sly is the charismatic leader of the band of thieves. He's got that moxie, he's got that skill under pressure that makes him special. Sly Cooper is deeply involved with two ladies, Inspector Carmelita Fox and Constable Neela. He's kind of flirting with both of them. Why don't you and I go out on the town? And their relationship is actually one of the major narrative threads for the whole game. We're on for that date in Bollywood. Freeze, Cooper. Inspector Fox, as beautiful and unpredictable as ever. Whereas you crooks are so predictable, you always return to the scene of the crime. Let me up that security computer. Presto, all clear. Bentley is the brain of the organization, the guy with the gadgets. Um, he's just really fun. People have said that I resemble the character that I did the voice for Bentley, and I guess I can see that. Um, I mean, I am mostly human, but there's a little part of me that is a turtle. Any good heist needs someone who's gonna work the bombs, and clearly that's Bentley. Now head back to the safe house with those pictures, and let's get a plan together! Bentley really looks like Bentley, and Murray kind of looks like Murray, and they act like it. If people say that Bentley's the brains, Murray is definitely the brawn. He's all about freedom, you know? Just, just let it go. Yeah, baby! Let it all hang out! Murray is like big and a brawler. He's got the muscle of the crew. Murray can lift these guys up above his head and toss them into flames or into the water or off of buildings and things like that. And it's kind of all manner of slapsticky ways for them to be dispatched. The Murray scores again! Murray wants to do things the way Sly would do them, but it's sort of Murray's version of that. It's a little bit oafier. He's really trying to make himself really small, too, because, of course, he's got a lot to hide. This is a universe in pantslessness. <laughs> Hence, no pants. <laughs> no pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear pants. Um, and I like to hang out with uh, little furry animals. That's what makes it so real. They're just being themselves. This game we really wanted it a lot more to be about doing something rather than just going somewhere. And as a result, one of the things we really focused on this game was to really work on the AI. Sly is able to handle different classes of enemies in the game and it tends to be that the ones that are dangerous to him um, walk the you know walk the streets and are patrolling and guarding the areas. The guards are just more intelligent and more sophisticated, which makes getting from point A to point B in the world uh, both unique and interesting for every player who goes through it. No two players will have the same experience traveling through the Sly world. When we get a level from the 3D modelers, we have a lot of communication between them during the process of when it's being built before it's handed off. And um, basically we have a great foundation to work with because you need a, a good 3D foundation to put the maps on. For us, the environments, we really wanted to make them beautiful and interesting, but never more important than Sly. Not just artistically, but also game-wise, they should be fun to play in. Very jungle gym. They should feel very stealthy. You should feel when you're playing in these worlds. I can't believe I'm getting to do this. You and the rest of the claw gang have to be stopped. No! Let's dance! Here I am king! Oh, it's tough being this tough. You learn too much about the claw gang. Immortality is what I seek. Dimitri is this lounge lizard who runs a CD nightclub. He's a master forger slash counterfeiter. Look, I'm sure the cool cat's in a bag like us can work something out. The coolest part about Dimitri is how he talks. English is his second language, and he learned all his English from watching uh, hip-hop videos. Have you no vision? Are you hearing what I mean to you? John grew up poor on the streets of Calcutta, turned to selling illegal spices. He's come up in the world and he's basically trying to buy his way into royalty. He's just a low-level street thug in rich robes. All I see is a fat, pathetic weakling! 
The Contessa is a creepy spider, an expert in hypnosis, um, and works for Interpol, the police agency. She decides to open up this rehabilitation clinic for criminals. But wait, it's just a scam, because it's really up front so that she can hypnotize criminals into telling her where they've hidden their loot. You're an ignorant child playing dress up in his father's legacy. Oh, I know all about you and the Cooper clan. Oh, I just... <laughs> 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 John Besson was a prospector. He got buried in the avalanche for 100 plus years and he thawed out. And he's decided that he's going to push back the wilderness. He loves strip mining. He loves clear cutting of trees. He's just a product of his time. He just happens to be living 100 years later. So his entire mission in life is to tame the West. As my father said, the only good fish is an eaten fish. Arpeggio is a small flightless bird, and because he can't fly, he's completely enthralled with all the flying machines of Da Vinci. When they said I was playing the parrot, I was kind of like, oh, they'll love it when I come walking in. Hi, I'm the parrot. Uh, six foot four and very large man plays a little tiny crazy parrot. Arpeggio, eternal life, that's what I crave, eternal life. <laughs> I think one of the real big strengths of Sucker Punch is it's a very creative team that tends to push themselves. What's this wearing here? That is to make sure that Nate is working. It's always been a collaborative effort all the way through the pipeline. And the pipeline is set up like that specifically so that everybody gets their chance to inject themselves into what they're doing. Hey, how's it going? We've been really lucky in that we've just gotten really great people on board to to do the kinds of things that we need to do making a, a really great game. <laughs> well, we're crazy. Do you want any dialect or anything to make it appeal to the European gaming market? Raccoons, squirrels, turtles. Sly Cooper 2 is the finest game you'll ever play this year. Well, those are the bonus features. I can't help but feeling. I know there's one for episode two. Da 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 Well, I guess that's all the bonus features for now. I'm not sure if there's an episode two or an episode four or episode six. So, um, I will see you guys in my next Let's Play, Psycho for 3. Oh, I don't know if there is. See you guys later.